have made it to the Driftwood Lodge. Absolutely crazy uh, boat ride last night. Went for about an hour, hour 10 in pitch black in the long boat. Obviously no depth sounder, you know, GPS devices here on these long boats. So had to trust in the locals. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty bumpy ride and just getting absolutely saturated. But we made it. We came through this uh, lagoon at the end. Timing the sets of waves, pretty big uh, swell coming through. Crashed through into this lagoon, it was just crazy. Hard to explain, but um, made it safely. And uh, this lodge here is absolutely incredible. The work these guys have put into it is so, so cool. Just set in this thick bush, jungle, whatever you call it. Just the noise of the insects and birds and just nature. So I'm just going for a cruise. Had a beautiful breakfast and uh, heading down to the shorefront here check out the ocean make a plan for later hopefully get in the water and go for a, a quick dive drops off here to like thousands of meters of water it's deep water um, so there should be some good fish life yeah hopefully my ears play ball not good just had a nice ginger lime chili ginger turmeric made a bit of a hot drink there and just gonna keep drinking that all day hopefully flush the sinuses and the system out amazing as usual travel that bit further you just get to the more remote spots and it's uh, just better this place is just set in this beautiful beautiful piece of nature welcome to driftwood eco lodge nestled in some lush forest on the outskirts of the solomon islands beautiful place to unwind and relax and where I would be situated for the next two weeks based for spearfishing diving and just immersing myself in the local Solomon Island culture the eco lodge here as you can see situated in this beautiful forest backdropped onto the mountains everything made from local hardwood timber products all locally sourced including these awesome light shades made from fossilized coral which after being lit at night as you can see are incredible nature's sacred geometry in full force the whole lodge all made from this local timber was just an incredible place to unwind during the day read a book chill between spearfishing as you can see the local carvers are very talented just a wicked spot Matt and Geordie's water park they call it all local fresh fruits and vegetables on offer every day lounge out chill and enjoy this special spot in the Solomon Islands locally sourced whalebone here I believe that's from a blue whale that washed up on the beach here's my residence for the next two weeks everything made from local fossilized coral and wood as you can see just a beautiful place indoor outdoor flow you can hear all the insects outside humming and buzzing almost deafening at times beautiful beautiful spot And that is my home for the next two weeks. A very special spot and I hope one that many of you can come and enjoy also. So check out Driftwood Eco Lodge in the Solomon Islands. So this is where I came in last night. The swells dropped down a bit. There's a small little river channel that goes out. It's basically like a small bar. And uh, we timed the sets in and just came hooning through. We'll go have a look. Old canoe here, seen better days. Woo, so that's the little 
opening we came through last night in the pitch black and this is wild woohoo awesome After settling into the lodge, it was time to go get in the water, test run the ears, see if they were all functioning, stretch, warm the lungs up, and get a taste for this local water. Clean, clear reefs, incredible. And all this beautiful reef right on the doorstep of the lodge. A few dives down, sinking into the blue water. Taking it easy, making sure I'm equalizing well, warming up the ear muscles, everything. And it was all very positive, no issues so far. Whether coming here to read a book, practice your free diving, spearfish, or go trolling on the boat, it has it all right at your fingertips. A very special place. Smile. Uh. Alright, testing was complete earlier. Ears and sinuses are holding up. Going on for our first dive. We made it out of the shallow coral reef crossing. The boys were pumped. We were ready to spare some fish. We make our way up the Morovo Lagoon to a pin emerging from deep water nearby, loaded with strong current. A good place to get some pelagic fish. We were hopeful to bag a dogtooth tuna, Spanish mackerel, basically anything that swam by. We were there to get wet and get some fish for dinner. <laughs> With excitement levels at all time high, Maddie chucking his float over without the float line and then jumping in without his fins on, <laughs> it was clear to see we were pumped. With the current pushing so hard, we had one chance. One chance to breathe up and dive down and drift perfectly on top of this small pinnacle and aim to intercept some pelagic fish hanging just out from the bait schools. Finally, after a few drift dives, 
we got our timing right and we're making drops down sinking on top of the school. In this drift I encounter a couple of GTs, Giant Trevelli just can't quite close the gap, stretch out for a pot shot but miss. With the sun setting, light fading, and the whole water column getting very dark, it was time to secure our fish. It was our last drift dive, and I was adamant to get something. I sink down to about 15 meters, and I find the school of bait fish. This time, I'm patient, I wait for my chance to stretch out and get a clean shot through this fish. Slowly making my way to the surface, it's getting dark and gloomy. A good time for fish to be emerging, but a good time also for sharks. I get to the surface, breathe up, start to pull the fish up and I can see a shark below, trying to intercept my catch. I'm not losing this fish and winch it to the surface, and I'm stoked. A few missed fish, a few fish ripping off, but we've managed to secure a couple of nice eating specimens for dinner, met with a small dog tooth tuna here, where we're going to be eating well. <laughs> Very well done. Jesus. Have you done that before? <laughs> Why didn't you do that when we went out last time? Good fish, Jake. Yeah. Thank you. We get back to the lodge to find Stu from Papamoa, New Zealand, who had caught a beautiful yellowfin tuna. Catch of the day, and then we feasted raw dog tooth sashimi some locally caught crabs all sorts beautiful dinner as usual at the driftwood lodge spent the night lounging listening to music listening to the nature outside mesmerized by these lights and that was the first dive first day done and dusted all to be repeated once again tomorrow
I'd spend the days down beachside, just chilling, listening to music, walking, finding treasure. There's such all the beautiful coral that washed up on the beach. Lots of fossilized coral, which Matt uses for his coral lights. As I'd mentioned before, Marova Island traders and there's just so many different types of intricate designs all made by nature, just incredible, the different patterns. Here's a large, large piece of fossilized coral. Very, very cool. This piece was awesome, looks exactly like a mushroom. Once again, nature's so amazing. Needle. Needle. What do you got, Jaden? <laughs> Good piece? Right, we're doing it, another mission. Yesterday we only had a quick, quick go in the afternoon. Um, gonna head out a bit earlier today and just rip into it. Hopefully, um, counter a few more fish still a bit rough out there but we're gonna head a bit wider so we'll see what's see what's going on get something a bit bigger than yesterday's bait fish um, but yeah pumped so let's do it get straight in the water straight into the action here's Matt a 45 plus meter diver very experienced and just watch how he breathes up dives down with very minimal effort kicking down very good technique and he sinks down into the depths pops up a few minutes later unreal diver my turn to dive we just take turns, one up, one down. Diving down onto the reef, the steep drop off, finding the bait fish and just hanging out, waiting for a predator to come in and have a look. Ideally, the dog tooth tuna. The fish at the top of every sparrow's bucket list. With not a lot of experience diving the tropics, the coral reefs myself, I had to learn from Matt and Geordie quickly and with a few tips such as just getting right down onto the reef, head down and just relax, count to 10 before looking up slowly, slowly moving your head around and all the fish would start to creep in for a closer look. Still, the lungs need a bit more stretching, warming up so back to the surface and after a few dives we were starting to get some better bottom time. Point. Where's, where's Killian at? 
the boys nicknamed this local spot Five O'Clock Doggy for good reason. As that sun would start setting, light fading, almost without fail, doggies and other predators would start emerging from the depths. You can see the large schools of bait dancing around here, very fishy spot. It was just a matter of bottom time and getting lucky. We had seen some doggies, a few lone rangers. Here's Killy surfacing from one of his dives. Local boy, also an excellent, excellent diver. These beautiful fan corals down below. I was able to use these as a bit of a wall protection, a hiding spot, and just sit patiently as the bait would start to merge in, come closer for a look. Just had to be patient, the doggies would come soon. Here's Geordie diving down this time, also an excellent diver. Both guys really helped me out and improve my diving. We had found the hot spot of baitfish, which seemed to be hanging around 20 metres deep. So we'd take turns once again, one up, one down, sinking down the reef, finding a position at this depth and just waiting patiently, hoping for a nice dog tooth tuna to swim past. Found a nice position here after about 30 minutes of diving. Decided to push on, creep a little bit further down, another five meters. And make it to this little pinnacle jutting out here, a few sharks around. And then I spot a nice coral trout a few meters deeper again. I creep down, getting ready to take a shot at the coral trout. Then this massive school of dog tooth tuna swim past. All happens so fast, stretch out, take the closest one, and it's lights out. It's all over for the dog tooth tuna, the shaft entering perfectly, right through the brain and the fish rolls over. I've stretched my limits here, that extra few metres of depth, and I am at the end of my breath hold. Body screaming for oxygen, full of adrenaline, I kick my way to the surface, dragging an extra big weight of this fish up with me. I know I've got my buddies at the surface watching for me, so it's all good. Push onwards, push upwards, ready for a gulp of fresh air and celebrations. Oh, 
didn't go all the way through, but I would, I would have lost it. <laughs> yes! I was actually chasing a little trout jobby thing, and then they just came and hustling. Is there a few? Yeah. Six, seven again. Oh my god. Same size. <laughs> wow. Yes. Absolutely stoked. Every sparrow eventually wants to land their first dog tooth tuna and I'd managed the feat, ticked it off with a very respectable sized fish. No matter what size, no matter what gear you have, these fish can humble anyone. Powerful, powerful fish will take you to the reef, bust your gear off and ruin your dreams in a blink of an eye. So job done, I was over the moon. My first dog tooth tuna. Doggy. Yes. <laughs> Back in the water, we dove until the last dying moments of light, which is the best time to be spear fishing. Geordie sinks down once again into the dark gloomy water as that sun set. We were losing light but it was still very fishy. Unfortunately as that sun sets it also means the sharks become more active as you can see here. White tip cruising below me. Matt gets a shot into a dog tooth but as it goes if you don't put the lights out on these fish there's a very high chance sharks will come for a free feed which happened in this case unfortunately. It was all getting very sharky and dark so it was time to head back. <sighs> giant mullets, looks like a mullet alright. Yeah, they're like a you giant... You smacked that? Yeah, I got that, that, that little doggy. That mullet thing. On your last dive back here, there was two just following you, like, fucking on top oh, of you. Oh, following me. Yeah, right on top of your head. I was like... Two of those come, like, up to my spear, <laughs> and it f***ing jammed. Man, you got snot all over your face. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're very cagey, bitch. Look at this. I think I've only ever shot one. Like, that? That's sick. Uh, that, that was one. Oh, oh man. Really How fucking cool are they? It literally just, yeah, it's a giant <laughs> Holy like a shit! Fucking, Prehistoric yeah, it's a, mullet! It's a mullet with a fucking salmon tail. Woo. It's a pelagic mullet, I suppose. I was just crammed up like I haven't died in a year. Here's the puppy, another puppy, and check this out. I don't know, maybe I put yours on and I felt like an angel. What's this thing called again, bro? Huh? What's this one called again? It's called a milky fish. Milky fish, basically a giant yeah. mullet, a big mullet. <laughs> Sorted.
I'm more impressed with this thing. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, a and very just, impressive fish. Yeah. Kelly, hold it up so we can get a yeah. better. Show us your fish, bro. The weakest part of it, if you just touch it here, even in screwdriver, he's weakest. just dead. It's oh, like, yeah? But it's like it's got, it's got like it's got like this huge piece of glass well, over all its face. nerves in his nose, or so. Whenever we use a net on him, we just use a screwdriver to pop through him. Oh, yeah. See the glass over its face? Look at, that, look at the size of that lens. It oh, goes yeah. all the way over it. Hmm. Stand back there a little bit. Go the right? other way. Yeah. Show, show the pretty side. There we go. That tail. Oh, oh. Him, the, him the disgusting yeah. side, bro. Just, just tuck it back in. Back in. No, make a kalena. <laughs> Make a kalena? Yeah, I wanted Make to see the pretty side. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that there we does. go, there's the lot. That's a big mullet. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big mullet. Oceanic mullet. Very Oceanic. cool. Cool tail. Yeah. Nice Almost bro. looks like a salmon, like a type Thank of you. salmon. Here's the dogs. Dirty dogs. He's got a bigger eye than yeah. the big oh, one. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. He's not. Look <laughs> 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 it. Well, first doggy, and um, still got about a week of diving, so pressure's off, which is a good thing. Can relax now, and uh, usually brings on more fish, so we'll see. Milky fish, giant mullet, they're incredible. But um, yeah, gonna eat well tonight. All right, time to process. Guts is out. Nice. A bit of fat content in the belly, looking good. It was very fat fish, so. This will be sashimi tomorrow. Beautiful. Nice fat in there, eh? Look at that. Yum. Right, it's Sabbath day here, no work, no spearfishing, so project is to cook up the tuna head and uh, make a nice fish head broth, and then I'll take the jaw home. There's the doggy. It's giving all the basics popped up, all the good stuff. Uh, our broth simmering, so time to put the head in. Just to go sideways, I think. Just to put it in there. Um, and just burn your hand. <laughs> cool. Oh, delicious.
All right, we've got um, all our doggy out here. Well, not all of it, but um, definitely enough for lunch. So we're gonna do some sashimi, try a poke bowl with whatever ingredients we've got, and a, uh, maybe a tartare of sort, tuna tartare. So yeah, my first tartare I had um, of tuna was actually in Madagascar, and it was a yeah dog tooth tuna tartare. First time I'd tasted doggy, so we don't really have all the ingredients, but I think we have enough to give it a nudge. So I'm sure it'll be tasty. And then we'll do, so for the poke bowl, we'll just do nice little cubes. And then for the tartar, we'll have to do much more chopped up. Cool, that's a good start. Okay, we're gonna make a fresh garlic aioli as well go with the, the poke bowl goes with all fish really well amazing when it's freshly made sugar garlic vinegar half teaspoon salt and egg Easy. Okay. a little bush tuna tartar for you. <laughs> I identify as a tartar. <laughs> All right, here we have our fresh tuna tartar. It's um, collapsed, but that's what you get for having tuna so fresh. Looks pretty good, pretty fancy, and a pretty cool spot to uh, eat. Bush through that ocean right there. Thanks for everyone who made it through this video tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that Primal Pursuit adventure in the Solomon Islands, a very special place, setting, in such a remote location. If you're interested in a trip to the Solomons, be sure to check out Driftwood Eco Lodge online. What a special place, and there it's well set up for sparrows, divers, or anyone who just wants to chill in the beautiful Solomon Islands and experience what they have to offer. Also be sure to check out morovoislandtraders.com Matt's work with this fossilised coral is absolutely incredible. You might want one of his light shades for your house, workplace or a gift for someone else so be sure to check them out. If you want to support the channel check out primalpursuit.co.nz where you'll find some of my merch, hats, beanies, t-shirts, the works and if you're enjoying this content please hit that subscribe button that really helps out the channel. 
and then you can see more next time get notified for future videos that's it for me i'll see you on the next Primal pursuit adventure thanks for stopping in safe diving out there everyone leave a comment let me know where i should go next any ideas for missions i'm keen to explore the world underwater above and keep sharing these adventures with everyone out there cheers